Hello and welcome to this Best of Atlanta Concerts.com Artist Talk interview. This is Caleb C. with Connor Christian of Connor Christian and Southern Gothic. Hey, thanks for coming out. Absolutely, man. Glad to do it. So, I've actually been listening to your uh, newest CD, 90 Proof Lullabies, for the last two days. And the first thing I thought was, um, this is music I need to get drunk to. It comes off as, as good rock, alternative country, but you've also got some reggae, a bit of blues, honky-tonk. That's as you probably listen to a lot of music, right? Yeah, I, I, that's what I spend most of my time doing. All right. Uh, what what kind of music do you normally listen to? Um, it changes a lot, man. Um, right now, my favorites, uh, or, or what I'm listening to more than anything, are Avid Brothers, Old Crow Medicine Show, uh, Ryan Bingham. Um, you know, kind of the, the all country, the Lost Highway kind of kind of uh, crew. Um, you know, uh, I listen to. Uh, the XM Sirius uh, Bluegrass Channel a lot, um, and uh, you know, just every week, man, I try to find you know one or two new artists that I dig. You know, I try not to, to get too stagnant when I what I listen to. But you listen to old school music too. Oh yeah. I, Ninety Proof Lullaby's got a a cover of One Took Over the Line. How'd you pick that cover? Um, I don't know, man. I, I just remember uh, being young and. and you know, my parents always listened to the oldie station, and that song's always stuck with me because it has two distinct vocal parts, and, and actually, a song that we, used to, that we covered on an old record we did um, called Bring It On Home To Me by Sam Cooke was the same thing. I just loved the way there was two voices through almost the whole song, and they were back and forth. It wasn't one was always the high part and one was the low part. They intertwined with one another, and uh, I just always felt like that song was really interesting, and... Uh, you know, especially, uh, you know, to, to the subject matter to be what it was, you know. You know, yeah, I'm real stoned, but, uh, you know, I'm able to write these really complex harmonies. So I, I thought that was real cool, um, so that's why we did that song. Yeah, my uh, my grandparents, they watch the Lawrence Welk show, and uh, that's, I, the first time I saw that, it absolutely blew my mind, because it was, like, straight out of A Mighty Wind Blows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Um, so... You do a lot of traveling for your tours, right? We do, and, and uh, yeah, I guess in 2008, I think our final total was 230-something shows, and, uh, you know, this year we're hoping to maybe not up that number, but uh, up the number of miles that we travel. We're, um, we're going to be going to Europe in the summer, um, and hopefully by winter we'd like to get to Japan and Australia as well, so. But you also did a lot of traveling before you started a band. Your your bio talks about you going to Singapore, Indonesia, Belgium, South Korea. The stereotypical perspective on that is that, you know, an expat will go off to other countries and then they'll come back with a, a mandolin and a taste for Thai food. But you're in a country band. I like that. It was nice. How'd you... How'd you uh, How'd you get to this point? Um, well, I mean, a lot of that traveling, man, you know, started when I was, I was real young. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Indonesian was my first language, just uh, because uh, when, when we uh, when we moved uh, to Indonesia, obviously I was very young. I think I was about six months old, and uh, it was part. You know, my my dad uh, my dad worked for different you know departments, State Department, uh, Defense Department, and part of his job was to uh, you know, give off a certain image. Uh, if the ambassadors to a country had um, a driver, then my dad always needed to have a driver. Well, in the case of uh, Indonesia, everyone had had a uh, like a, a nanny type thing for the kids. Uh, even though my mom was home full time, it was just sort of the culture that, that I spent a lot of time with the nanny. And she didn't speak any English, so I learned, uh, you know, Indonesian from spending a lot of time with her. And uh, my parents used to tell me we'd come home come home to visit grandparents or whatever in the summer, um, and, uh, you know, I didn't understand them. <laughs> you know, like, my parents had to speak to me in one language, and, uh, you know, and obviously my parents are, are uh, both American, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not Indonesian or, uh, or any, any such thing, but, uh, you know, it just worked out that way. And as time went on, we, uh, you know, we moved all over the place. We moved to Singapore, we moved to Korea. Um, yeah, when I was older, it was... Uh, Belgium, you know, uh, when later on in my life after I'd moved out, um, you know, I spent a lot of time traveling as well. I left home at a real young, real young age, so, you know, I got to see a lot of the world. So are you, are you keeping up with your uh, Indonesian? <laughs> no, no, I don't remember any of that at all. All right, so we're not going to see any, like, Indonesian cover songs on the next uh, 
Con and Christian CD. Now that you mention it, it might be a might be a good. Uh, I don't know. No, no, you won't. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, 